Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Karamazov in the 5-minute pool on ICC. Karamazov is playing C3 Sicilian. I'm going to play this pet line that I like to play. It's a little bit dubious in this form, but that's all right. Um, I'm playing knight f6, trying to induce him to uh, advance in the center. He's not obliging. I think I'll just take and then play knight c6 now. Uh, he could play a3 and kick my knight out, or keep my knight out of b4. He does. I'll go here, and if he goes knight c3, I'll probably just play d6. Eh, I'll play d6 anyways. So he's going to have a space advantage now. That's the one drawback of this line. Like, black is pretty solid, but white has an undeniable space advantage. Um, maybe this would have been a better, a line better suited for a five-minute game, to be perfectly honest, but uh, I think I think I can try to make the best of it in this case. I wonder if knight d5 is okay. Knight d5, take, take. It's probably an all right continuation. I'll go here. Even though I'm accepting doubled isolated pawns, I think this is a decent continuation because the E and D pawns are likely to be exchanged soon, so I might not have double isolated D pawns for very long. So, you can take on d6, but I would take on c3. Well, I'd probably take back on d6 first, or maybe take on c3, I don't know. Plays e6. Okay, I hadn't considered that move. That's interesting. That's probably a good move. Um, if I take, he takes with the queen, and d5 could be a goner. Hmm. I could play f5. I probably will play f5. It's such an ugly move, though. It might be okay, though. Let's do it. And I'd be looking to play, like, knight a5, maybe into c4 after this. Or possibly bishop f6 to pressure d4. My pawn structure is a little janky now. Uh, bishop f6 or knight a5. With that move, I don't know what he's trying to do with that move. Hmm. Can't really think of a good justification for that. Well, let's play bishop... Well, oh, bishop f6 loses the f5 pawn. Let's not do that. Knight a5? Yeah, let's go knight a5. Pro b3, and maybe I can come into c4 as well. h4. Okay. He's unconcerned about knight b3. Well, let's do it. Kind of forces him to play rook c1. Or rook b1, rather. Um, I'd like to get some scope for this bishop. But how do I open the long diagonal? That's not possible. At the moment, at least. Maybe queen e8. Queen e8 and try to come to h5. Yeah, let's try it. Queen e8, and I might be taking on c1 soon. Well, now if I take, are you going to take with a pawn? I guess that's what he's saying. Okay. Because if he takes with a knight, d4 would hang. So he does take with a pawn. I guess his plan is king g2 and rook h1. Hmm. I want to attack this e6 pawn, but it's not going to be easy. What if I go queen h5, king g2, queen g4? But he has bishop c2 at any moment, kicking my knight out. So that's always a complicating factor. Let's go queen, queen g6 instead. I think a key factor coming up will be if I can get this light square bishop into the game. If I succeed in doing that, I'll have decent counterplay, I think. But um, if this bishop just languishes on b7, behind this pawn on d5, I'll just be somewhat playing down a piece. So rook e1. Um, I wonder if rook c4 is at all interesting. Doesn't really work. Well, it might work. No, doesn't really work. Too risky. Let's go here. And if e7, I have rook f7. And hopefully I can win that pawn. Yeah, I just want to play rook e7 and maybe even double up my rooks on the e-file to attack this, or bishop c8. 
catching up a little bit on time. He had a time advantage. Thank you for the poster who told me that this guy's name was Karamazov. Uh, I guess it's like Cyrillic uh, Russian. <laughs> I was uh, I was calling him like Kapanabob or something the first time I played him. I think this is um, Nikolai Noritsian from Canada. Yeah. So that's not the correct flag, but <laughs> Queen E3. So is he trying to discover to attack my knight? Like Bishop B5 is a threat now. I can just go here though, right? Ooh, also he's threatening potentially knight, knight h4. Yeah, knight h4, queen h5, uh, bishop e2. This is a nasty move. Very nasty move. Hmm. Rook e7, knight h4. And if queen e8, I would drop the f5 pawn. That's no good. Rook e7, knight h4. Knight h4 is a big problem. What if I play h6? Is that at all decent? I might try it because I don't see what else to do. Yeah, let's play h6. I'm just running low on time and I'm not sure what else. Oh, but he has bishop b5. The move that I just mentioned but <laughs> failed to address. Bishop b5 hits my, my rook and also my knight on b3. Not good. Yeah. Anyway, I can cause some mischief? Not really. I gotta save my knight. Alright, so I'm going down material now. Hmm. Not much fun this position. Let's take with a pawn. My bishop is still horrible on b7. Knight c4 is like my only active move I can make coming up. Yeah, queen there is strong. Don't think he's going to be messing this one up. All right, let's just go here and see if we can somehow create counterplay with the queens off. If I don't play queen g4, he's just taking on d6. I guess we'll pre-move that. He actually could take on h6 here. Because if I take f3, he has queen g6 check. Forking my king and my rook. And if king f8, he had queen f7. It's actually a little fortunate for me that he didn't uh, do that. If rook e7, he has knight h4. Not good. Knight c4, b3. Rook e7, knight h4. Nothing is working here. Let's go here. Not much working in this position. I bet I'll play, well, actually knight h4 I can take on d4 now, so he might not do that. He could take on c6 and then play knight h4, and he'll probably just win this pawn. At least that would entail him giving the exchange back, although that looks pretty good. We're getting low on time now, so I'll see if I can blitz him out. It does not allow that. Well, at least now my king can come to f6. My knight is coming to g6. He beat me to the punch. Um, Time warp. Let's go back here. Guess we'll take there. Check. Try to bring our knight over here. It's just like a bullet game now. Check. Hmm. Check. Wow, he's going to do this. Okay, interesting. If he takes on, uh, huh. Okay, let's run this outside pawn. Check. Hmm. Check. Ooh, yeah, he snuck that by me. Check. 
Ah, okay. F7, was that good? F6? I guess that works. I had bishop g6 if I wanted, but... Alright, well, I probably had more chances than I deserved at the end. Uh, let's take a look. So, this was a... Like I said, this, this line, I mentioned it before. I, I like playing it because c3 Sicilian players, they tend to get the same positions all the time. Like, if I play knight f6, he's going to play e5, knight d5, d4. This is really mainline stuff. Um... There's a lot of theory associated with this line, too. But uh, b6 is a good, like, blitz weapon. It's probably better at 3-minute than 5-minute, because <laughs> he knew how to respond to it. Like, one thing he doesn't want to allow me to do is sink the knight into b4 and create counterplay. So that's why he played the prophylactic move a3. That was a good idea. Yeah, and white just has a risk-free advantage here. Where did it start to go awry? Yeah, I didn't see e6. That was a good move, e6. Um, I think I'm just solidly worse at this point. Yeah. So knight d5 was poor. Although anyways, my position is not good. Huh, knight d7. Yeah, knight d7, queen e4, threatening mate. g6, bishop h6. Rook e8 I'd probably play, queen f4. Yeah, I'm very cramped. Maybe I'll have to ditch this line. This game might be um, the nail in the coffin as far as this line's playability for me at, at these time controls. <laughs> so it just looks like I don't have a good position. E6, F5. I didn't quite understand what he was doing with G3 and H4. It seems kind of extravagant. But even here, the eval is not exactly going up for me. Yeah, at no point is it uh, thinking I have a decent position. So queen g6 is really not good. Ah, bishop b5 or e7. Ah, okay, because e7, if I move rook e8, then bishop b5. Isn't that just working for him? That's simple. What did he play? Rook e1. Yeah. So queen g6 is a big blunder. Queen e7 is better. Still, though, that pawn on e6 is so tough to get rid of, and as I mentioned, I have this buried bishop. Hmm. Yeah, this was no good. I'm minus 5. I allowed bishop b5, but the position... Queen e3 was a really strong move, actually. Because even if I address the threat of bishop b5, like, say I play rook e7, this knight h4 move is deadly. Hitting the queen and hitting f5 twice. So, like, if here knight takes f5, I pretty much can resign this position. So, well played, Karamazov. Let's just check the endgame to see if I had any chances. Yeah, queen takes h6 would have been convincing here. Because after queen takes f3, maybe sure. he didn't notice that um, this is winning. Because if I go king h8, I lose the rook. And if king f8, I Check get mated. Mate. So, he could have just captured on h6 with no repercussions. So, only positive repercussions. And now, like, this end game, okay, it's still completely losing for me, but I managed to muddy the waters. I actually thought that his best way to, well, not best way, but a clear-cut way to try to win would be sacking the exchange and then going knight h4 and trying to take this guy. That would have been really interesting. King g7, Check. take. King f6, take. Again, maybe I have some outside chances of saving this, but... He went here, and then suddenly I got mildly coordinated. <laughs> Check. It's interesting when you're desperate in chess. Like, you'll take, like, any victory you can. You know, the fact that, like, I didn't lose right away in that position after I was down the exchange is, like, a miracle. And you know, I look up and I see, like, eh, I'm getting somewhat close on time Check. to him. Just wasn't enough. And then even got it into a bishop versus knight end game. Check. So I think decent defense Check. by me, but it was more so a function of him not converting it properly. Like, yeah, rook g6 was good here. Attacking these two pawns. Check. Check. Yeah, maybe I can save this end game. The outside past H-pawn is a 
useful weapon. Ooh, King E7 would have trapped the knight. Hello. See, I was winning all along. Let that be a lesson to you, Karamazov. <laughs> Check. Yeah, just not enough at the end. King F6. Check. Yeah, I should have just taken his pawn on F5. I did that with no time left. Yep, and F7 was decisive. Okay, well, I might have to ditch this line. I think it's a lot better after C3 and then B6 is more playable. I think after Knight F3, E6, and then C3, B6 should not be recommended. So, um, maybe I'll get into a more detailed explanation of why in the future, but uh, basically, in the main... I mean, I can, I can say it right now. The gist of it is, if e4, c5, c3, and then b6, a lot of times black won't move these center pawns for a while. For instance, d4, bishop b7, uh, bishop d3, knight f6, let's say knight d2, and then cd, cd, knight c6, and black can just play for minor piece activity without having to commit the pawns yet. But when I've played e6 already, I think it loses some of its sting. It's not as, a, as aggressive an interpretation, this line, as it once was. So... Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this game. I will be back tomorrow with another Blitz game. And please leave me any feedback in the comments. Hope you guys have a good weekend. Talk to you later.